as a team, I should look at team development, people development. There are people who will look at nurturing only from the HR point of view. HR has to do trainings. Why can't I be my own HR for my team? And I am doing that in my office in India, of course I am. Because I know what are the gaps in my teams. But if I just keep observing the gaps without doing much, I am not nurturing them to grow. We do the same thing with plants. We take care of them. When the plant dips a little bit, we get concerned about it. What are we talking about? Plants. But we can have a similar attitude of empathy and concern regarding our team members. I think it makes sense to me, which means to some extent it does make. How are you, Swedika? Great. She's recording, she can't say much. She's saying I'm not doing so well, but anyways, carry on. All right. Okay, let me go to the next poll. Somebody said, who said opportunities? Somebody, opportunities. Great. What's your name, bro? Shalvin. You will always. He shall win, always. Hi, Rodney. All right. I need this break, so I just become a little crazy, So because I can't just keep continuing. Your name? Sal. Sal, yes. I met him. Oh, quickly, opportunities is one. What else? Objectivity. Objectivity? Can you explain object? What? Lovely. Same timing. <laughs> All right. I All said right. my name already. So you can explain. <laughs> okay. Objectivity? Um, it's all about having an unbiased opinion. Um, you need to weigh things out. Being neutral? Yeah. Okay. So done. We already have it. But thanks. <coughs> Anyone? What does O stand for for a leader? I think it's something very micro and even at a broader level. Hello? Is everything all right? Too loud? What's O for? <laughs> optimistic. Okay. Okay. Optimistic, not, not negative. Looking at the half glass is always half full and not half empty. Perfectly point taken. Please understand, though I'm crazy a little bit, I don't know, but these points are making sense, boss. It's not that what I, the, this is just one scorpion. You can, there are more, many more scorpions coming up. Yes, dude. Organization. Yeah, you're talking about in the verb form, right? Yeah. Not a noun. Organizing skills, something like that. Absolutely. Planning and organizing. How many of the leaders actually write an action plan every day? You know? How many of the leaders would literally write tasks to be done? <coughs> Correct? Ta writing the tasks, putting, putting durations. Assigning, putting a, 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 you know, something like a column called delegation and understanding whom to delegate what. Maybe that's what is organizing, isn't it? Getting better organized, self-organized. How's it going? All right, thanks. A word which also can add to these O's. Observation. What is observation? I want you to elaborate a little bit because I have forgotten what it is. Observation. A leader should be observant. Hey, who said that? Absolutely. Can you say it a little louder, sir? Absolutely. I feel like clapping yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we clap for sir? <laughs> Observing, observing, I would say as alertness, being alert to what's happening around. For a marketing guy of an organization, being observant about how competition is going ahead. What new products are being launched by the competitors. Products are the same, what new packaging is coming. Being observant even about what's happening in my team. Sometimes the leader is so preoccupied with his own work, he doesn't realize there's a level of demotivation happening. That you, he doesn't observe the reasons for absenteeism. Many of the organizations here and in India face a problem called absenteeism. The observation is not at a superficial level, bros. That, oh, he doesn't come to office. The observation is why he doesn't come to office. If you just understand that people are not coming to office, that you're just seeing it. Observing is going deep. You watch somebody not performing well, but you observe why he's not performing well. <coughs> Does it make sense, sir? Thank you so much. Love you. In a good way. <laughs>
<laughs> so what's happening around here? Do you know why all this is happening, me moving around and stuff? I'm not just watching, I'm observing, right? I'm observing how the reactions are coming. Is it a reaction or a response? So for me also, I have to be observant. How my team members are performing cannot be just watching them. Observe. Sometimes you will not realize there are two people in your team who are perceived to be not doing well, but when you observe, you realize they have amazing potential. Observing is going deep. Analyzing. Okay. I'm not completed yet. <laughs> but since you say I will complete. Observation. Hi. You're okay? You're good? All right. How good? I'm just kidding. What's your name? Francis. Francis. You got the word observation? If you, if you link it to yourself, my team, am I understanding my people? Have I, am I observing how they're working? And that's where even nurturing comes. If I don't know my people by observation, how will I nurture them? So think about it. We just have four more. What does R stand for? Can you think quick? R stand for? Respect. Respect. Okay. <laughs> Any other R? Hmm? Why not? Just a few more because it's like a group set, you know. He's going to ask R and uh, sorry? Reliable. Reliable, absolutely. Dependable, reliable, absolutely. If I give him a job, I know he's going to do it. Absolutely. That fellow, I'm not even sure he's going to come to office. <laughs> but I'm going to observe why he's not coming to office. And then I'll nurture him to make him dependable. Wow, what a connect. I like to self-praise once in a while. When I feel deprived of it. <laughs> Honestly, it's respect. It's respect. Respect is, is a reflection of humility. You know, you want to say, I'm very humble. So can I come in? Not now. That's not. But I'm very humble. Respect is a reflection of how, how down to earth, how nice I am. Now we have a lot of things to tell me tonight, isn't it? Respect. Respect. How do I respect? One of the beautiful ways of respect for a leader is to listen. They say, uh, just hold on for some time, then we go. Okay? <laughs> we just talk about body language. A little early. Can I continue? All right. Respect. Respect is how you allow or you, you let a person even communicate with you. When you, you know, listening is a form of respect. Tone is the way you show the respect. Uh, how do we look at disrespectful leaders? Is it only communication? Openness to somebody else's perspective is also respect. When you say, I, I'm willing to forego what I have decided, though I'm a leader, but I'm willing to listen to you, is respect. Having openness in, to, to be criticized is respect. And personally, respecting people at all levels is also respect. Like it's very easy to respect your boss. There are some who do that just because he's the boss. He turns his back, there's disrespect. Even that is not correct. But for a leader to, to go to the level, if you don't mind me saying, even a person who's opening the gate and saying, hey, how are you? All good? His day will be a motivated day. Just because that senior just said, hello, how are you? Mere words, but actually they reflect humility. So friends, for me, the respect comes as humility, being humble, being nice. So as leaders, the opposite of which we should avoid is arrogance and overconfidence, which also comes sometimes unknowingly. You know what is respect? If I'm telling, sir, what's your name? Praveen. Hi, Praveen. I'm, going to, I'm telling Praveen something very interesting. He knows about it, but he still says, oh, okay, really? That's interesting. That's a respect for me. And when he says, no, no, I'm aware of that, that's arrogance. Understand what I'm saying? Sometimes when you pretend you don't know much just so that the other person gets encouraged, it's respect. And as leaders, we must do that. Because as leaders, we've earned that experience. We know what he's going to say. Still, listen. Guide. I want to go to the next one because respect is not a very deep word, but it is a very practical daily word. Yeah. 
You take the soul and press on. <laughs> well, I want to come on this one. Give me the page. Oh, I didn't write. Hey, only one left. Passion. Anything else? There are many words, bros. And, no? Absolutely. Practical. In the sense, not theoretical, practical. No slides. Just speaking out. No. Get people to do things. No lectures. Converting lectures into actions. Practical, isn't it? Anything else? Principled. Who said that? Principled. Following rules. Something which uh, Peter said, isn't it? About having integrity, being principled, following values. Absolutely fine. Perfect. Ain't done perfects. <laughs> you seen that act? Yeah. It's got me, man. Like in the middle of the night, I'm like, ain't done perfects. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> Actually, I'm searching. Positivity. Of course, positivity. There's a step ahead of being positive. Prior, what? Priority. Priority, being prioritized. It comes as part of being organized. Well said, dude, how are you? All good? Well, the word is, sometimes we, as leaders, end up being reactive. Do I got on my own. <laughs> You know why? Because there are leaders who wait for the competition to come, eat you up, then you react. It's too late. Happening at the moment won't tell you who and what. <laughs> no, we'll wait, no, we'll, we'll see what to do. Why wait? It's there. Invest a little money and put that product in the market. No, we have to think about it. What's your problem? By the time you think and you put it, the product of the competition is there inside already. And then there's this hectic meetings. Let's beat the competition. Why did you allow the competition in the first place? So being reactive is a late, delayed reaction. Proactive is when you anticipate something. It's like for a bank, anticipate. New <coughs> financial instrument. How do you attract your customers? Which type of customers? which other banks have not done it yet. And then create a plan that is proactive. <coughs> proactive also is anticipation of changes in maybe policies and taking countermeasures for that. Proactive. When you make things happen, it is proactive. When you wait for things to happen, it is reactive. So we need to be leaders who proact. And I don't say that as an individual, as a team. It's about a product, get a marketing team, get a production team, sit together, have a brainstorm, that's proactive. And proactivity begins at the mind, then it gets converted into action. For me, it makes sense, I'm going to ask you. Makes sense to me. That we have to take the first step forward, anticipate. You know, HR people, if they're not proactive, what happens? We believe. Because you've not been proactive to, to, to see the potential in people. And those people probably are waiting for a promotion, waiting for good opportunities. At some point of time, they get frustrated. They get offers because their potential has been recognized by somebody else. So even in, in every function, a leader has to be proactive. Products, got to be proactive. Same products, let's innovate. Even innovation needs proactivity. And so we are left with the S, and that which affects all of us, and that which can become a barrier to the entire set of the other alphabets which make this copy and 
which stops this scorpion from stinging us and feeling, wow. <laughs> and that which I would like to demonstrate, that which can affect us, it can affect our team at an individual level and a personal level also. A person I met just yesterday, somewhere, said to me that his wife's been, you know, has a health problem. He was down, he was sobbing. So, as a friend I was talking to him, a couple of them were talking to him. What was he going through? A person who, who says that I am absolutely good at my work, but I'm not getting any opportunities. It's just like this. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes this can lead to health problems, diabetes, blood pressure, it can lead to something which I've seen happening even to me at home, losing my temper. And it can just come in if we don't, if you're not proactive in handling it. I don't have the thing. The black is there so far. I just put the red. That's okay. Are you okay with the red? Green. Stress. Unfortunately, it has to be an important part of a discussion. I don't feel like going to office. Stress. I can do anything, but don't take me to that boss. Stress. The cause for stress could be million causes, but if I am stressed, I need to do something which I will demonstrate. Just let me write this now, please. Stress. And here the word I want to add is management uh, or stress reduction. See friends, I know a person who claims and who seems to be the happiest person, okay? But when you have a, okay, can I say that? When we have a beer together, the stress all comes out because he's hiding it. He's not showing it. A person who comes across very happy has told me that he's been diagnosed with high blood pressure because he doesn't want his family to know he's stressed. There was a time when, you know, we would crack jokes and he would sit in a corner just being there because he was stressed about his work. The day he gets a promotion, he's happy. The day he, he, he realizes he should have got a promotion but he did not, he's down. Why fluctuate? <coughs> so I want to seriously address this. And please don't misunderstand. I'm not here to say we are stressed. I'm saying let us deal with it if it comes. The breathing becomes fast. I'm not able to concentrate. The stress of even facing an audience, hands start sweating. <coughs> Mind becomes blank. Remember exams. In India, it happens a lot. I'm not joking. The stress, it's stress. Marriage is breaking. Stress. At a personal level, at a professional level, we need to do this. Do something. So can I be allowed by all of you to just share with you what I practice? I brought this from the Himalayas in 2001 when I went with my guide, my mentor, my guru. And I have found that my mind relaxes. My stress comes down. It doesn't go away. Remember, by doing what I'm going to show you, it's not that the stress will vanish. It will be less. My way of dealing with the stress, my way of dealing with what is creating the stress will be different. Are you understanding what I'm saying, friends? My approach will be different in how I deal with the situation. I would rather be a relaxed person than a confused and a very hyper <coughs> tense person. And for that, allow me. And I brought something from the Himalayas to show you also as an example of what I'm going to show you as vibrations. Okay? Sound vibrations. Why? Because if you feel the stress, do this. I'm going to demonstrate two things. One, which is part of your body, it's part of your physiology. And that's breathing. Ask yourselves, how many times do you do deep breathing? I had a person in America who said to me, hey, that, is that yoga? That's India? I said, boss, remember you're from Earth. <laughs> I said, don't lower the argument. <laughs> India, uh, I'm from Earth here, 98%. So as a person from Earth, I'm as susceptible to stress as anybody on Earth. 
the degrees may vary. So how would I show this is if people sitting at the end are not able to see, okay, either stand up and watch or use X-ray vision. <laughs> uh, people there who really are, uh, can't see, please adjust yourselves or whatever, but please watch. Because this is not a magic show, I won't banish you something. But it creates, it creates relaxation. It vibrates your nervous system. It vibrates your, you know, I would say your emotions, your thoughts. But how? You got to just sit on the chair, keep your spinal cord erect. This will automatically create healthy breathing. But I'm not talking about breathing technique, that will come later. I'm sorry, I'm sitting, okay, this is better, it's better, all right. And do this just as an experiment, friends. Don't do this because I'm telling you, but I've been practicing it. I keep my back straight, my hands just resting on my legs, my knees. I close my eyes and then I do this. channeled anger. <laughs> no, he's testing my stress. Yes. My God, so smart. Subtle. Okay, on a serious note, this is called the buzz of the bumblebee. Okay? It's called the buzz of the bumblebee because it sounds like the buzz. It vibrates your nerves. But you got to do it at least seven, eight times. I can't do seven, eight times, but I can give you a demonstration, and which is what I've done. There's another vibration, which is where the mouth opens half, the lips open half, and what comes out, it sounds as um. Don't take it in a different way in terms of ohm and stuff, that is different, but this is where that the throat voice comes out more, okay? When you do the buzz, the nasal voice comes out more. That's why it's called um, okay? Not come, that is later, um. <laughs> so it's like this, all right. I take a deep breath in and then uh... It's not like, how many times should I do practice of it in the morning, you know, people ask me as if it's some major orchestra music, it's not. It's just a sound, all right? <clears throat> and when you do that sound, it comes from your own throat, the vibrational intensity is much more. Along with it, please start, if I may take the risk of saying, let us all start respecting our own breath. And by that I mean oxygenation. How many of us are really respectfully oxygenating our body? If you don't, if you're thinking, is it making sense? Google it, you'll come to know. Oxygen is a great nutrient to the brain. But we have to deep breathe. When we are stressed, we don't even breathe half. We are hyperventilating. So what do you do? Remember the count, eight seconds. So what do you do? Inhale, okay. Hold, 8 seconds. Then exhale. What are you doing by this? Firstly, you're taking a full breath, which we need because it creates a higher amount of oxygen. 
when you breathe through your nose, what happens? The quality of oxygen is better. So don't do. <laughs> you can. That's called yawning. All right. So you take a deep breath in through your nose, a full breath. Hold. And then. I swear it really helps. So just the word is, the, the number is eight. I mean, ask yourself here, yeah, when was the last time you took a deep breath? You can sit. <clears throat> no, ask yourself. The question will be, I'm not sure if it's a good question to ask, Mr. Mayur, because you don't have the answer. And if you say, why should we? The answer is in the word oxygenation. Add more oxygen, it refreshes. The blood absorbs the oxygen. It travels everywhere, including this brain. And that creates a refreshing <coughs> feeling. It relaxes the mind. When I'm stressed, I get angry. When I'm stressed, I shout. When I'm stressed, I get depressed. When I'm stressed, I can't be innovative. Many of these things will crumble if my stress increases. I had a friend who said to me, when I come home, I have a lovely wife. I said, really? And, <laughs> and two daughters. And I said, wow, great. I'm just. But he said, when I reach home, I just go and sit on my sofa and I listen to lovely music and I have my space. So what about your family? Thing is, when you do when you do stress management or you do certain things, you won't get that much stressed for you to then you know spend only time with yourself. If you do these breathings, if you do this vibration, the level of the the, the possibility of getting stressed will be less <coughs> because you're already stronger inside. So if you say, Mayur, what do we really need to do as leaders? Manage stress. What have I shared with you? What I think helps me. You find your ways. I listen to Greek chants, for example. The Greek chantings. I've downloaded that from the YouTube. It's amazing. I don't understand a word of what is. <laughs> but that's exactly what I want. Because <coughs> I'm tired of understanding things in life. <laughs> I want to de-understand. You understand what I'm saying or you de-understand? <laughs> <laughs> now don't say almost everything we have not understood, so please. No, the thing is, let's think about it. <coughs> These are some of the ways I practice. It doesn't mean you've got to do the same thing. But find your own way. I have people who go for a trek. They say when I go to, for a trek, I, I'm completely de-stressed. I said, good, but I can't. Because I travel and all, I don't have the time, but he, they work at a particular place. So once a month, they have a group, a trekking group. So that is their way. I'm only saying, don't be stagnant in terms of finding ways to de-stress. Because stress can become a barrier. It can stifle the urge to be innovative and etc, etc that we've spoken about. All right? You're the best presenter, but you don't feel like, because you're stressed about a meeting that you had two hours ago. And when you come, you say, good morning, because you're stressed. What have those people got to do with your stress somewhere else? So that's that's where I'm coming from. I think somewhere I feel the scorpion is complete. All right, I'm extremely happy with your your response. All right, no seriously. Uh, like I said, one thing I'm most awkward is giving a continuous talk because I just can't. I like I like the response here. At the bottom of my heart, I don't feel I'm qualified to give these long talks, all right? I like to work with you, and in some sense, all of you have worked. That's exactly why I wanted to conceptualize it in this way. So you start thinking, you give me your points, and I'm happy that you did. I'm so happy that in the Scorpion, just two or three, I think three alphabets, where you allowed me to think and bring up my own. Otherwise, you are the people who brought it up. So, Avnish, I'm through, I guess. What do you want me to do? Because <laughs> I don't even have these things about thank you so much. I felt so happy that you were here. It's amazing. I just can't do that. I just can say if you can like extracting the milk. If you have extracted a few things, share it with your team members. It's fun. Share it with your growing son or a daughter. It'll be good. All right. Percolate this information to the people around you. I think in that process, you'll become stronger. <coughs> and if you have any doubts, don't ask me. I'm tired. <laughs>
Of course, ask me. If I don't know, I'll say I don't know in a different way. I'll say come back to me later. You know, you know that communication trick. If somebody asks you a question, if you don't know the answer, what do you do? You say, could you elaborate? <laughs> so in the time that the person elaborates, think what to say. <laughs> <laughs> then you say it's a very interesting question. Don't ask me again. <laughs> oh, wow, some people. Avnish, I would like to. I would like to hold on. Just a second. On a serious note, I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, you know what? You've taken your time off and come here. Yeah. Serious to God. And uh, I hope that a few things that I've shared with you, uh, you'll take it, you'll think about it. All right? You also made me feel very natural because that's the way I am. I can't put on because I, I just can't. I feel it's a waste of my own energies. But at the end of the day, your cooperation in the session has played an important role for me to be the way I am. All right? I also want to thank some of my friends who have come here, like Naveen, Rogs, and Gary. Uh, you know, sometimes people come just to say, you really do trainings and all? Let me check you out. Right? <laughs> so, so they've come, but uh, love you guys. All right. Plus some of my other close friends like Amrita and uh, Arti and Kirti are here, with whom I've worked for the 1,100 people. And I'm so proud of it. All right. And for the lovely smiles, the lady and everyone there, the elegant one, who, who plucked my C's and my O's, I thank you and all of you here too. All right. With that, thank you very much. Um, you know what I said, uh, this particular, I said I got something from Vimalaya. Now that was not part of a session session, but I just wanted to show you how vibrations can be. It's a Tibetan bell, it's called a Tibetan gong, okay? And, uh, and it comes with a wooden stick. It also comes with this metal thing where you can hit tang tang tang, but I've removed it because there's another sound that comes when you hit the wood on the metal. Can I just show it to you? Yeah, it's very, it's just for fun, alright? Session is over. So just listen, this is one way of creating the vibration. If you see, it's a very pure vibration. <coughs> what is interesting is it's wood and metal. And remember, this is not, the acoustic is not perfect for this, but still it's floating. But now, what he did, and which is why I bought this, is this. Please observe. Let's hope it works out.
uh, on uh, feedback, and I'm sure you'll get the same feedback you received in FMF. You've just been so impressed with the feedback that you got. And uh, it would be the same here too. Um, I've never come across such a uh, training as this, and uh, it's been an eye-opener for me. Thank you. Um, and I, I, I think uh, the rest of us would agree. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank um, you in the usual manner by uh, presenting this honorarium. <laughs> and I ask uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> the session was so amazing, she forgets names. <laughs> For those of you who know, I'm William Parkinson, leader, Chairman of Leadership Fiji. So. <laughs> So I want to ask you finally, did you have a good time? Yes. I'm not getting it. Did you have a good time? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you. Love you all. <laughs> so if you're interested in doing the program, Leadership Fiji program, please make sure your email is with <laughs> There's more refreshing to the back. Please help yourself on the way out. Thank you. Thank you so much.